Dude, you know, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, but you know that rabbit hole that you can fall into on Amazon Prime when you watch one really weird, off-the-wall, scary movie? And then you start getting recommended movies from that off-the-wall, scary movie you just watched, and the shit just gets weirder and weirder (laughs) and weirder. I fell into one of those rabbit holes last night and this morning, and it's scary what started coming up. (laughs) Started off with a movie, I don't know if you uh, ever heard of it, but it's called Society. It's a 1992 horror movie. The, uh, if, you, if you get a chance to watch it, I recommend it. It's a fun movie. It's, it's not the best movie. It's only rated like three and a half stars or something like mm-hmm. that. But uh, the first hour and ten minutes of the movie did not prepare me for the last 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> it's one of those. It took, a, it took a turn so far left with the weirdest special effects. It just, shit was happening that I, it just, I was not expecting to take place. <laughs> That's always fun. And then, and then I went from that to the next recommended movie. Was a, it was called The Thingy. <laughs> not The Thing, but The Thingy, Confessions of a High School Placenta. And what it was about, oh, wait, when you, when you hear this synopsis, this female bodybuilder who's like taking all these weird experimental drugs and stuff gives birth to a living placenta that has one eye and is actually alive and then takes it home to rear it as her own child. And it ends up going to high school. Uh, <laughs> That's the kind of rabbit hole that I recently fell into, dude. It was, it was crazy. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I've been, well, the last, I'm going to say, like, week or so, I've been working on a couple of different things just project-wise for both Scary Dad and for You Know What's Awesome. And um, so I've, it was funny because we watched, uh, uh, I, you know, so for, for Scary Dad, I watched Ginger Snaps and American Werewolf in London. And then for You Know What's Awesome, Tomorrow we're recording, um, you know, what's awesome is uh, Savage Steve Holland movies. So Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer from, from, you know. Which are two of my favorites, especially I watched, rewatched One Crazy Summer a couple days ago, man. uh, That is one of my all time favorites from when I was young. Dude, yeah, it was on all the time. It was such a great, so, so like, but the, 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 the weird switch, right? <laughs> like I go from, from, from that to, to, uh, to that. And so I've been catching up on some really cool old stuff. I mean, I remember when we were talking about, and we even talked about it on, you know, it's awesome. But when we were talking about meatballs a couple few months ago, how right. whenever we're doing the fresh eyes on stuff, you can't, even though meatballs is not a horror movie, you can't help but look at it in that, through that lens. Right. And, and you're just like, Oh my God, there's so much, so much cool stuff that I forgot about or just kind of took for granted <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, I was actually watching the other day and I was thinking we need to do a fresh eyes on this because I found so many plot holes in this movie after rewatching it. The fresh eyes thing kind of screws up movies for me sometimes <laughs> because I look at them differently. But the Beastmaster oh, dude. has so many plot holes in it that are just, it doesn't make sense. I need to go back. But and watch, it's been a long time since I saw Beastmaster. Um, I think when I borrowed it from you, like right after we first met, like three or four years ago was the last time I watched that. And that's still, it's kind of like, Beastmaster is one of those that I watched so much when I was a kid that it's got certain things that are just like, it's like it's stuck into my memory, but it's like, wait, no, that was in Conan. Like whenever the chick gets shot with the, with the, with the snake yeah, arrow, the snake, you know, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. that was Beastmaster. Oh no, that was Conan. You know, but uh, <laughs> it's like, well, we used to watch so many of those similarly uh, plotted movies when we were young, you get Mandela effect on a lot of them. Exactly. So it's, um, but yeah, I remember watching Beastmaster not too, you know, a couple three years ago, and being like, "What happened to the snake?" Like, oh yeah, that was that was the snake cult in in Conan. That was, uh, <laughs> those uh, long-haired Darth Vader being a <laughs> being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well you want to get into it? Let's do it, do it. All right. Well, this is episode one five three one fifty three of Scary Dad Podcast, and you may have noticed two things. First, we didn't have a show last week. And Sorry, we're we're uh, we're releasing this here on a Wednesday, and so what happened is, for the longest time, for for the first ninety percent of our uh, podcasting run, Scott and I would get together on like a Tuesday, right, and then we'd record two episodes, 
And those two episodes would be released a week following. So like if I recorded on a Tuesday, then I'd have an episode to release Monday. And then this one we recorded would be, I'd have like three weeks to mix them up and, and post them. Whereas with the, with the moving and the changing schedules, we record on Sunday for a Monday release. And it's just, I, I can't do it that fast and still hold the quality. Um, so we moved it to Wednesday so I can have a couple, couple few minutes to get this thing, uh, done properly. And then we didn't have one last week because one side of the audio didn't come through or it came through, but it was choppy and messed up. And I, I, it just, it would have been a low, it, it, I could have done it, but it would have been taken a long time and it would have been a low quality. So we're re-recording last week's episode and then, uh, having having a moment in our in our old business to talk about what we would have been doing this weekend if it wasn't for the goddamn coronavirus right so um mr gomez first the old business all right this isn't exactly old business well it's old business because it was like four days ago but um as you may have known or as you know that Scott and I are huge fans of a little gathering they call Texas Frightmare Weekend yes. um, up in Dallas. And this year we had it planned. We were going to go up there and wreck shop and collect autographs and just burn through more money than is probably legal. Um, meet, meet, meeting <laughs> our, meeting our, uh, our idols and uh, collecting stuff. But because of the freaking virus, um, Frightmare has now moved uh, to September 11th through 13th. So we had this this kind of strange hole in what we were going to do. I mean, we're still stuck at home, so it's not as if uh, there are options. Yeah, <laughs> but um, because of it, we had a lost episode. We had a lost road trip. We had a lost show, <laughs> lost convention, kind of a lost party. So we figured we'd just kind of go through some some quick little you know frightmare frightmare memories and, and kind of the lineup and the people that we were expecting you know we were looking forward to seeing so uh i don't know who what's your past present and, and future what's your what's your uh crown jewel of uh frightmare to you well of course i would have to say that would be clive barker mm -hmm. that was the big one for me just uh beating a uh a guy that has always been a huge influence on my life in, in both literature and movies. So the Clive Barker thing was huge. Adrian Barbeau would probably be second. That's awesome. Just from, from as, a, as a kid, just so many movies that she was in from Swamp Thing to Cannonball Run. She was in so many things growing up that, uh, that I remember her from. The Creep Show. She was everywhere back in the early 80s. Yeah, you got her to sign that book, right? I found, yeah, I found that. yeah, I got to sign that book. I got to sign a, a, a Swamp Thing print. Uh, uh, took a picture with her. It, it was awesome meeting her for sure. That's killer. Yeah, I got to say probably my my top because probably Halloween's still my favorite horror movie. And, you know, then there's certain books, stuff. But the Friday the 13th series, I think as a kid, you know, standing in the video store and staring at the backs of those, those – uh, those video cassettes and, and right. the man in the mask and literally being scared of Jason Voorhees from a very young age to meet all of them last year or year before last, whenever uh, uh, they, they had the Jason reunion. So, um, you know, got my mask signed by all the Jasons, got to meet them, got to joke around a bit with, uh, with Kane Hodder, um, got to got to tell talk to CJ Graham from Part Six about you know Scary Dad podcast and give him some stickers, um, and he was real real cool guy, real talkative. Um, getting to meet Steve Dash um, before he unfortunately passed away this last last right. year or so ago. So um, you know I have this this mask with all these autographs on it from that that year that is. Of all of, of you know, of all the collectibles, the comics, the toys, the different the different stuff that I have, that's uh, that's probably the crown jewel of all the stuff that I've got is is that mask. And right. uh, if if um, of of all of the Jasons that are still with us, um, the only one I don't have a signature for is uh, for the the reboot um, in uh, two thousand nine, uh, which is. Uh, 
its name escapes me, but I'll think of it in a second. Um, it's not. Ah, I'll think about it in a second. But uh, but yeah, I was looking forward this year. Um, they were they they have a ET reunion with uh, Henry Thomas, Dee Wallace, and Robert McNaughton. So um, that's I mean, because <laughs> say what you want, ET was scary as hell. <laughs> yeah, it was. It just it, it, no kid. Every kid that watched that movie cried. Yeah, ET was rough. Um, you know, Kane, Kane Hodder's back for a while. Um, always, always good to see Kane. Um, and I have got some other Friday, the Thirteenth memorabilia that I would probably certainly get him to sign. You know, uh, and I can't just real quick. Two thousand nine, it was Derek Mears, Derek which Mears, I can't believe that I forgot too, because he was of course Swamp, he's the new Swamp yeah. Thing in the Swamp Thing series from DC Universe. Yeah, so I need to get Derek Mears whenever he shows up, and then I can uh, put this thing under glass properly the way it needs to be. <laughs> yeah. um, we got Jackie Earl Haley, who uh, that's that's the big one this year that I was looking forward to meeting was Jackie Earl Haley because he's another one just with his acting in the Bad News Bears movies mm -hmm. in the early 80s through everything he's been in that I absolutely love from Watchmen to Preacher. Just he was a huge one for me for this year. He was probably my go-to one for this it's year. It's funny because he, like my wife, she's like, I don't like that guy. He creeps me out. And I was like, well, good, because he plays creepy characters. Like he's a good actor. <laughs> that's what yeah, that's like. just it. He, he's an incredible actor because he can get in – you know, there's there's a lot of actors that are considered great actors, and I always use this as an example as Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, he's been in a lot of great movies, a lot of huge movies, but he's always the same person. Mm -hmm. He's Tom Cruise as a race car driver or Tom Cruise, you know, as, as a fighter pilot. Yeah. He's the same person. Jackie Earl Haley changes his look, his personality, his voice, everything in the roles that he plays. I mean, he was... He was Dukes. People don't realize he was Dukes in that semi-pro movie with uh, – <laughs> With fucking uh, Will Ferrell. Yeah. He was the stoner guy with the long hair that made the half-court shot. That was Jackie Earl Haley. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, he's, he's exceptional. Now, Tom Cruise did impress me with his role in Tropic Thunder. That was the That's actually what I consider one of the biggest acting roles of Tom Cruise. Yeah. Because he totally yep. changed his, his demeanor. Because it's not him. It's He's yeah. actually a character. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Um, but yeah, I like, you know, Jackie Earl Haley is awesome. He's always, he's always bound to... I mean, he plays disturbing characters and he succeeds. So yes, there, there you go. Yeah. Um, again, Tom Savini. Um, it's always a good time chatting with Tom. He's he's uh, he's awesome. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw him on uh, on Instagram or Facebook, one of the two. But he's uh, because of this whole mask thing, because of coronavirus, he's been making masks, um, and they look like they're all like blood and guts and leather and just like kind of funky looking just super cool um and you know you've seen him in his mask shop where he's got all his stuff yes yeah where uh, everything is in the background yeah. you can see all kind of cool stuff behind him yeah um one i was really looking forward to is tom atkins um, yes uh not night of the creeps and uh, halloween three and and so many other just i mean Creep show. He was in Creep yeah. show. He was he was another huge part of our eighties childhood. Mm -hmm. up. He's again, and he's one of those actors that you know you know him from like a Halloween three because he's like the the main guy. But then you see him in other stuff. And you're like I didn't realize he was in this, you know, because he was he was kind of all over the yeah. place in the eighties. Right. Um, then I know you're a big fan of uh, of uh, I don't know why I can't talk today, but. Uh, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, yeah, I'm actually very much looking forward to Justin Long. He, uh, I like him in a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, Justin Long is another one just kind of like, like, well, he's more of a comedic actor. He's kind of out of his own, not out of his element, but he was kind of playing against type in Jeepers Creepers because he's he's in so many, like, silly, like he, he was in Will Ferrell or he was in Dodgeball. Uh, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's just so, such a, funny comedic actor and then he's in jeepers creepers and he gets his eyes ripped out it's kind of like uh <laughs> well, well it's funny one of the reasons i want to meet him so badly is that every movie that i've seen him in you know and being that he does a range of different types he's done a couple horror movies mm -hmm. he's done a ton of comedy he looks like a really cool ass guy yeah 
he just looks like a super nice dude. And that's one of the reasons I was definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to still meeting him. But uh, yeah, that was one of the ones this weekend I was going to be checking out. Yeah, because really, we would have been on our way home probably right about now. We would have been uh, wait, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the valet to bring our car down or walking through the parking lot with all of our loot to, to get on out before everything got crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is what Frightmare does. I mean, they had, I mean, if you, if you look at, some of the biggest movies ever, you know, you like with between, between ET, um, then they turn around with, uh, doing the Candyman reunion with Virginia Madsen and Tony Todd. Right. And that's huge. Um, for, I mean, Tony Todd is, is awesome. He's been, but he's, he's kind of been at a lot of these, but Virginia Madsen, not so much to get them, to get them right, together right. and to maybe, that's a big to maybe get a photo off with them. Uh, cause Candyman's another one of those. that's just, uh, I wouldn't say it's underrated, but it's, it's a, it, to me, Candyman's kind of a quiet horror movie. It's, it's, it's just there. It's like comfort food. Like it's something right. that you, 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 you can always go back to and depend on it to be frightening and disturbing. And the Candyman, like we said before, uh, the Candyman doesn't care. He doesn't care if you're trying to uh, to rest his soul. He's just gonna get you with his hook or his bees, one of the two. Right. <laughs> you know, another one that falls in that same class with Tony Todd, as far as being a multi generational horror icon. That's what I definitely look at Tony Todd as. Is Bill Mosley? He will be there too, mm -hmm. which is going to be. He was another one I was very much looking forward to to seeing because he's in my favorite TCM movie, which is Part Two. And he's in all these Rob Zombie movies, which I love. Mm -hmm. And Bill Mosley was a big one I was looking forward to meeting. Yeah. Well, and then we're talking about Ginger Snaps today and Emily Perkins. Um, so she was in It as Beverly, Beverly Marsh. Yeah. And uh, she was in Ginger Snaps. So that would that have been cool just to see her and, you know, say hi. And <laughs> I, I dig your films. And then Danny Trejo, man. Yeah, he is he is such an awesome guest, man, and such a nice guy too. I've uh, I've, I've met him at cons before. He uh, he's he's awesome. He's awesome. He loves his fans. He uh, and he's he's not like his characters. You know, you'd expect someone abrasive with a huge ego and mm -hmm. stuff. But Danny Tra Danny Trail is one of the coolest guys you will ever meet, dude. Like, I saw him. I saw him on on. Or I heard him on a podcast. He's talking like he up, he opened like a taco stand and something like yeah. He's just yeah. Like, it's just, it's just like Danny's Tacos or something like very, uh, like unassuming. And he's just like, yeah, you know, it's cool. <laughs> it's, it's... And, and, and you've probably, uh, you've probably seen pictures that people have taken with him, but he's also a lot shorter than you'd imagine. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it. There's a lot of celebrities that are short. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I'm, I'm be missing, uh, Frightmare right about now. And then, oh, well, it's in September. We'll go. Yeah, the good news is September is going to be absolutely insane. Yeah. Between Texas Frightmare Weekend, Houston Horror Film Festival, and the Scary Dad Haunted Halloween Show, it is going to be a very busy four weeks. Yes, and I'm looking forward to it because we need to get out of this damn house. I tell you, <laughs> we, we went out yesterday for a country drive and got attacked by dinosaurs, man. You saw <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw, I saw that. Glad you got out of there with the pictures and everything. Yeah, it was uh, uh, what you going to do? But yeah, that's what I got right now for the uh, for the old business. What you got for the new? We're gonna take a break and come right back. Well, actually, for for this week, for the for, since we talked about Frightmare and everything for the uh, old, uh, for the new business, we're only gonna talk about one thing. Okay. And I, uh, I want to bring up uh, just the fact that John Lafia died, mm -hmm. who uh, was co writer of a of a Child's Play, one of the most iconic horror movies ever made. Uh, it has come out that he died by suicide, which is incredibly sad. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he would. That was a big, uh, big blow to the uh, the horror family. Yeah, for sure. Definitely sad. There's a there's a lot. It's it sucks because with the coronavirus, every time you see reports of a of somebody who passed, you immediately wonder if it's because they had the virus or something right. else. And then when you see that, you're like, I don't know. Kind of, kind of, kind of, it brings you down even further because you're like, oh man, right. you know. But yeah, well, let's drink one to him and rest in peace. 
Yes, indeed. And we'll take a break and come back with our discussions. This is the story of two young American students traveling through England on the night of the full moon. Did you hear that? I heard that. What was it? It could be a lot of things. Fate let one live. A lunatic must have been a very fierce fellow. Wasn't a lunatic. What? A wolf. Oh, be serious, would you? And now everything is changing. Yes! Changing. I'm changing. Good Lord. John Landis, the brilliant young director of Animal House and the Blues Brothers, has turned a classic tale of terror into something new. Something different. Excuse me. A naked American man stole my balloon. I'm a werewolf. An American werewolf in London. Something different. Here we are. Yes, 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 yes. Lichen, lichen throats. Yes. <laughs> so, let's uh, let's start with the. I guess start at the newest one first. So. Uh, hey, I have no problem with that. With old old. Uh, it's funny because uh, G- Ginger Snaps. It's twenty years old already. Like, there's this weird sort of uh, timeline weirdness that's like, it's like 20 years ago is just like yesterday. It seems like yesterday. Where does you get older, time by, fly, uh, goes by faster. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Totally. Man. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I was running around thinking about like this. This is some, some like new cult movie that I just ain't got a chance to watch yet. And it turns out it's been out for 20 years. And I finally got a chance to watch it. It's pretty damn good. Uh, it's a great movie. It's a fun movie. It uh, it's 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 very unique in its storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's not like the werewolf movies. One, you uh, the focus is on two sisters, so you have strong female leads like uh, horror tends to give us all the time. But uh, it, it it's a it's it's a fresh fun film. Yeah. Well, and what I was gonna say is like I I appreciated the fact because. Uh, again, you know, we're coming out of, in, in 2000 when it came out, we're coming out of that sort of, so like horror in the eighties was very unapologetically violent. And uh, especially with some of the more like a lot, a lot of your kind of mainstream franchises had to fight with the MPAA to get all ratings. But then there was a lot of direct video stuff. That, I mean, it was, it was unapologetically violent. Like you saw the knife yeah. go in. And you saw the blood splatter. You know, you think about a movie like Reanimator, where it's just like, ah, blood, or or Night of the Living, or Return of the Living Dead, where it's just like violence on violence on violence, right? And then like you get into the '90s, and they do like these quick little cut shots where it's like, you see the shadow move and the knife flash, and then the scene changes, and you know, so it's kind of a in the '90s, it, it horror kind of fell off. Um, it, well, it, it, it seems as though all the, the, your mainstream uh, 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 companies and everything, they, they were fine with the PG-13 exactly. rating to try to get a larger audience, to try to get some kids in there to see it also, just to help with ticket sales and everything. And, uh, and all the gory stuff was limited to your independent filmmakers, which at that time we didn't have streaming services, so there wasn't a huge uh, uh, audience for your independent filmmakers all the mainstream distributors took over and, and they just, they changed the landscape of horror mm-hmm. for the nineties. It was, it was sad. Yeah. And so while you had music getting awesome, then you had movies getting, getting crappy, <laughs> um, which is, which is weird because then you had like some mainstream horror movies like event horizon that are some of the scariest movies that have ever been made. Um, 
yeah, I guess they bombed at the box office, but they're, they're cult classics shortly thereafter, you know? Right. But, um, that was one thing about Ginger Snaps is like, they did not skimp on the blood budget at all. I mean, there was, no. there was a significant amount of blood. The violence was with the lights on and kind of in your face. Um, that, that without, I mean, it's a 20 year old movie, so it's going to be spoiled, but like the, um, when, when, when Ginger and, and, uh, it, I can't remember the guy's name, the, 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 the drug dealer guy with the cure. Sam. Sam. That was Sam. When, when, yep. when Sam's injured and he's sitting there and Ginger has an opportunity to like make a choice, like here, come get me, leave, let him live. And she's like, no, I'll just kill him real quick and then come get you too. Yeah, I'll get you too. <laughs> like, right. It's just like, uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was not, it was kind of shocking almost. It was just kind of like, boom, like, oh crap, she got that guy. Like he's not a survivor. He's not going to stumble out right. into the dawn, you know, you know, clutching his wounds. He's, he's got his throat ripped out. That's. <laughs> it, it was a great, the character development in the movie was great. I love the fact that it started off, you know, with the, the, the older sister being the protector of the younger sister. And then when the older sister starts going through this change, all of a sudden the roles are reversed. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, the the younger sister was an introvert, older sister was an extrovert, and everything just kind of switched. It uh, it, it the movie develops well. It uh, it doesn't slow down. Yeah, it never got. It keeps boring. a pretty good pace. And it, it, it that was another thing that I liked. It's like from the very first scene because the like the opening scene is that that bloody like paw that's been ripped from the dog, like when she finds it in the sandbox, and it's like. Okay, this is no, not a child's. This is not a kitty film. This is not messing right. around. Like this, this thing's gonna get mean. And when Ginger gets attacked, uh, when they're walking home, and the wolf, uh, wolf gets her. I mean, it's it's reminiscent of of uh, American Werewolf in London. That that attack yes. scene where I mean, it's just he's just getting shredded, and. Uh, very good up up there i mean so much better than a lot of of uh, wolf movies um they didn't they didn't she had a slow change so they didn't have to do like some kind of cheesy um you know ear hair and eyebrows sort of cgi right. thing like she she more or less you know she started growing teeth she started growing eyes it's one of the only things I didn't like and you had mentioned it when we were talking off yeah the, yeah so I was about the, to talk the about tail <laughs> yeah just some because you know you have movies like Zombievers which it's okay for it to have cheesy jokes and goofy stuff because it kind of starts off that way mm-hmm. and it go, plays that through the whole movie with, with Ginger Snaps it has more of a serious tone and they try to throw in the cheesy dark humor and it just, it, that didn't work quite as well in this movie. I, the, uh, the, the tail thing was just, it, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. I, I, I agreed with the tail. Um, it just didn't, it didn't seem necessary. Um, I don't know if they were trying to just offset the sexiness part of it because she's like starting to, to kind of come you know, come out of her shell and stuff. So they had to yeah. kind of tone that down somehow. I don't know, but it just seemed, it seemed out of place, like you say. And then they seemed to kind of skimp on the uh, full formed werewolf too. I was a little, I was a little like that. I mean, it looked like a hairless cat almost. <laughs> I mean, it, it looked like a very large hairless cat that didn't move very well. Yeah. That it was like a slow moving zombie that you should be able to get away from pretty easy yeah. easily because it, its joints don't move very well. It walks like it's on steel. Yeah. So, but other than, I mean, I can forgive that though. I mean, yeah, it was a good movie all around. It was, I enjoyed it a lot. So, so then that's one of the more, you know, kind of a modern werewolf movie. Let's uh, kick it back to what, 1982? Yes. To, uh, and which, you know, you know, at one time, uh, you remember me saying that to me, the, uh, you know, there were certain werewolf movies that were top to me and I never brought American werewolf in London out there, you know, upon rewatching that one definitely jumps up there significantly. Yeah. I, I have to agree. Um, that was one of the things what rewatching it, um, 
well, I guess last week because before we recorded the lost episode. But it was one one thing about rewatching American Werewolf is, first of all, outside of the special effects and the just kind of general awesomeness of the movie. There are several scenes in that film that are among some of the scariest I think that's ever been filmed, like the subway scene, um, where and it's 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 interesting because there's nothing there, right? Yeah, like, they're able to they're able to give you that fear without the blood. Yeah, um, it's just an empty subway and the gates are down and you've got nowhere to go um, and you're gonna circle back around on yourself, but there's nobody there to help you. Uh, nobody there to hear you scream and he's just and it's I mean I think about that like I've been in subways like that before like late at night several like uh, uh, 10 years ago 11 years ago we went to Europe and we had to get um, our plane so we were in we were in Munich and we had to fly out like at three in the morning to fly back to Amsterdam to catch our transatlantic flight back to the States so we had to go through a subway in, in Munich, Germany at like two in the morning and walk down through there um, to walk, walk down to the, to the tube and then ride the tube out to the airport. And man, it's creepy. I mean, there's some security yeah. guards, like there's some guys, you know, some cops walking around, but uh, it's empty. Every sound echoes. When you turn the little turnstile, it's all, dang, dang, dang. <laughs> you know? And in the daytime, it's all bustling. There's people everywhere. You know, it's like it's it's a crowded center. But at night, it's it's completely empty, and you have to kind of you start thinking about whether or not there's a werewolf in there. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and then you know you got the, the special effects, Rick Baker. Yeah, I was gonna say hats off to Rick Baker for the absolutely exceptional job he did with John Landis's vision. It was just. The, the the greatest werewolf transformation is a, to this day in movies. Yeah, there, there's there's nothing about that. Well, first of all, um, I had listened to Rick Baker on Joe Rogan, and he was talking about what John Landis had asked him for. He's like, hey, you know, I want you to come do the creature effects for uh, for for this um, movie. And so Rick Baker was like, okay, what are my parameters? Like, what's what's your and he and he said that. Um, he, the wolf the wolf walked on all fours he was not he didn't stand up he's he was he was a wolf that was that was rule number one and rule number two was the transformation was was lights on like full 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 visibility you can't hide stuff in the shadows so they had to come up with those uh those effects to look real with the lights on like bright light full camera like essentially no camera tricks. It's it's pure magic what you're seeing is because they had to develop right. those the stretchy things. They had to make those those armatures extend and then attach to them and 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 move in real in real time um, with his reaction to it. And then and and if you watch it, especially if you're watching it with fresh eyes, where you're like, oh my god, like. And he's screaming the whole time. The music's playing, but the lights are right bright. Like it's he's right. not uh, he's not writhing around and snarling. Like you watch his teeth grow in his mouth while he's screaming. It's yeah, ow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but it, it rivals the thing as far as special effects go. Oh, certainly. It's just, it's, it's it's that just he, Rick Baker did a phenomenal job. And you're looking at you know early eighties. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it, it's that's no CGI. That or those are practical effects. Those are special effects that he, he was able to accomplish that with. Uh, yeah. So hats off, like I said once again, to Rick Baker for what he did with this movie. Well, then you have you know John Landis, who's a comedic director, who who makes this. I mean, American Werewolf is very bleak. I mean, you know, there's not going to be a, a, a happy ending to it whenever Jack shows up and tells him he has to kill himself. Or else he's gonna kill people. It's like there's no way. And that's a, that's another another shout out to Rick Baker is the transformation of Jack as he continuously decomposes throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it, it's it that's some creepy shit. Yeah, and it, it's uh, it's very very well done. 
And then just with the just with the scares. I mean, we talk about scares and comedic timing and stuff, but just some of the stuff that's in there that, um, again, seen this movie a hundred times, but then, like, who expects him whenever like so, the 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 Nazis attacking his family, like the dream, the nightmare he's having, where he you know knocks on the door and they just are machine gunning everybody and burning everything and slashing throats and just destroying everything and he screams and then he wakes up and the nurse comes in and he's like it's like oh you're having a nightmare and he's like yes i was having a nightmare and then this freaking zombie nazi jumps out from behind right. the curtains and stabs <laughs> her like several times just like, and it's like <laughs> and then he wakes up and there's jack like it's just like relentless like it just keeps going <laughs> it's not, right uh it's just so so well done so scary i mean and again we were talking about how in the 90s these these movies kind of got neutered like american werewolf doesn't pull any punches it's violent as can be oh Um, yeah bloody as can be it uh there's there's a high body count mm -hmm. he goes on a killing spree that you you don't think it's going to end yeah well yeah that that too is he goes on his killing spree and in a lot of movies, like, oh, he went out and killed one or two people, but then, no, he just, he just runs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just, like, takes out these people and takes out that guy and, like, gets the guy in the subway. And then, like, then they get you in a jump scare with a lion, you know, like, because he wakes up in the zoo <laughs> and then, like, he's like, he's like, <clears throat> and you're like, oh, oh, that's a lion. That's not a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> So and, and I know we're talking about some some funny stuff and laughing about like waking up in the zoo naked and stuff like that and also the uh the whole thing in the movie theater with the ghost of the people he had killed the night before all coming to him the comedy in this movie works because mm-hmm. it's not cheesy it's well done it's well done and well timed and well placed yes and one of the better things about it is the music because even the music is almost like a sleight of, sleight of hand ma- ma- magician right um, it's like whenever they're playing Bad Moon Rising and, and he's wandering around the apartment, right? And he's he's bored. And they start playing Bad Moon and you know like something's about to happen, right? Like yeah. some like obviously this movie can't keep going. You know he's a werewolf. Like something's gonna happen. Right. And so he's listen you're listening to Bad Moon and then nothing happens nothing happens all through bad moon and then uh they flip the scene to the hospital real quick where the nurse is checking on the little boy and the boy looks out and sees the moon and then it flips back and it's blue moon that they're playing and (laughs) he starts screaming and i can just imagine like the first time you see that in the theater how shocking that would have been right because you're like okay he's going to He's gonna wolf out again. He's gonna grow some 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 ear hair and you know snarl and jump out the window, and then he'll be a uh, werewolf. But I can imagine sitting in the theater in 1980 and watching this like transformation that we just keep talking about because it's so awesome um, with the nails and the teeth and the ears and everything's just like right in front of you, and then the, the song's just like. It's all, <laughs> and he's just like ah, screaming. Uh, and the transformation is perfectly timed as far as length of time. Mm-hmm. It's not too short to where you feel robbed of anything, and it's not too long to where they drag it out. Yeah. It is it is perfect the way it's set up. You see everything. You know, you don't get bored with it at all. Yeah, I mean, it's just hats off to everybody that made that movie. It's still, I think, you know, as far as werewolf movies go, it's it's the top like i don't think i don't think you can beat american werewolf in london many have tried many have failed and there's a lot of really good werewolf movies out there but but that i mean for that 30 seconds alone that wins but then for some you know for so many of the other scenes in there and the uh the uh the showdown in the streets and as soon as she shoots him then the credits roll just like right. the movie's just over. Like, well, there's no, like, again, there's no happy ending here. It's right. Like, <laughs> there's no cure. There's no, there's no injection you can take that will, uh, 
make it to where you didn't just kill like 20 people randomly across the city <laughs> in a rampage, right? Like, <laughs> but that's what I got on, uh, on American Werewolf. You got any, uh, any final thoughts, any follow-ups? Well, you know me, I always like to find my, uh, my interesting facts about some of the movies that we watch, we watch just to learn a little bit more about them and about the making of them and just to see, you know, if we have all the behind the scenes stuff. So we're going to go through a few of those if you'd like. Sure. Uh, the script was actually, uh, he, John Landis came up with it when he was 18 years old, working as a production assistant in Yugoslavia. Oh, wow. Back in 1970, uh, he saw a man get buried feet first, wrapped in garlic, because uh, the people feared he would come back to life. And uh, so he came up with the idea for the script, started writing it, but then realized that no one was going to make his movie until he actually finally got some fame. You know, at uh, at that time, you know, he he was he was suddenly an iconic director as far as comedy goes. So he had a little bit of clout. Mm-hmm. He was able to get some stuff done. And it just so happened that the uh, when they finally got a chance to make it movies about werewolves were making a comeback a werewolf movie hadn't been made you know in forever and all of a sudden you had the howling you had the wolf in you had teen wolf you had so many movies that were coming out that uh that he finally got somebody to, to back him and make his werewolf movie become a a reality which is pretty cool uh while david naughton ended up playing the lead in the movie it was originally looked at possibly getting Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi to play the lead roles. Oh wow! Which would have been a totally different movie, man. It uh, it, it would have made quite as much sense. Yeah. Uh, they actually had to cut some of the sex and violence from the movie. The movie was the original director's cut. It was more violent. It had more sex than what we finally got because they were trying to keep an R rating to be able to end up in some uh in theaters. end up in theaters, right? Uh, the scene where, where Norton wakes up in the zoo, he really was naked in a cage with wolves. Oh, wow. He, yeah, that, that the wolves were actually really right there while he was filming that scene, which I thought was a pretty interesting fact. Uh, the scene in, in, in Piccadilly Circus in the square out there, a movie hadn't been filmed in that square in like 15 years. They were not allowing any filming to take place there. So what John Landis did is he uh, he decided to invite the entire police force to a screening of, uh, of Blues Brothers, I believe it was. And they loved the movie so much, they decided to say, hey, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and let him film his movie. So they gave him three nights, three hours each night between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. to be able to uh, to film the movie. And that's how he ended up being able to film it in Piccadilly Square, which which it would have been a different movie without that. Because that, that whole scene was a uh, was it's an iconic scene of the movie. Right. I mean, it is just incredible with all the car wrecks, with the uh, double dutch buses and everything. It is, it's just it's amazing, man. Uh, the. The porn movie See You Next Wednesday is a uh, – the movie that actually played on screen, John Landis wrote it real quick and they filmed it. And that's actually a movie that he made that they, they put up on screen during the uh, – in the adult theater. But what's interesting that I found out that I never realized is See You Next Wednesday is apparently a, uh, a phrase that Landis puts into all of his movies. And there's reference to that, uh, that phrase all over the place. Uh, he got it from watching uh, 2001 in Space Odyssey in 1968. Uh, there's a line spoken in that movie. Uh, someone says, see you next Wednesday. So he has taken that <laughs> and uh, it has been in every single movie, whether it be a poster, a billboard, or somebody says it. Even in uh, Michael Jackson's thriller video that John Landis directed, the cop tells the teens, uh, tells somebody, hey, I'll see you next Wednesday. Oh, wow. Which I thought was kind of cool. And in the scene where he's running through the tube, there's posters on the wall. See you next Wednesday of, of uh, the uh, orgy movie that's playing in the adult theater. <laughs> nice. it, it's all over the place. And now that I know that every movie I watch of his, I'm going to be looking for it. Somewhere. Of course. It was, it's in, it, it, it's in the blues brothers. It's in trading places. There's all kinds of movies where he, uh, the twilight zone, the movie, uh, in the timeout segment, uh, the German character says, see you next Wednesday in German. Wow. It, uh, it, yeah, it, 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 I thought that was a neat little tidbit to find out about his film but that's what i got man oh and also another thing rick baker 
the first ever Oscar for makeup artistry was that year. Oh, wow. And Rick Baker won. The, Rick Baker won the first ever actual Oscar for makeup artistry, which was well deserved. Absolutely, dude. Rick Baker's amazing. He's so cool. Uh, yeah. He he's just <laughs> so, so many of the things that he's done. I mean, from from Star Wars all the way to American Werewolf to I mean, just so many many movies that he's done. Um, Rick Baker's the man. Um, we need we need to do a special <laughs> episode just on Rick. But uh, cool man. Well, this has been good talk. Um, Definitely missing Frightmare man. I I really am. I missed all the beers and the chilling. And the wife is going to go with us and see the see how awesome it was this time. And she couldn't make it. So uh, and of course the, the the biggest thing to miss about Texas Frightmare is just the experience itself. With just all the people and all the fellow fans, and just the excitement and buzz, and it, it's it's a it's like a kid in a candy store. Yes, very much so. Cool, man. Well, let's go ahead and close this one down. It's been episode one fifty three, the lost episode about werewolves and our lost lost road trip, and uh, we've moved things to Wednesdays now. Uh, I don't know if it'll stay Wednesday forever, but for the foreseeable future. Um, I've heard that in podcast world, it really doesn't matter as long as it's consistent for the same day each week. So right. ha- having a move for, for the reason. And then if, uh, if you just don't have enough of listening to me talk, um, on scary dad every Wednesday, you can hit up, you know, what's awesome podcast. And we release every Tuesday. Um, talking about stuff that is not necessarily horror related, but somehow or another two horror fans, we just kind of, there's always a reference somewhere. <laughs> it just, it just happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we are, we, we're uh, starting, starting to kind of feel the, uh, we're, we're start, starting to find our pace here. So we're going to be starting to have some guests on, some people have reached out and want to talk about things that are awesome. And um I think we're we're about to start doing that. So uh, that's an, that's another fun show every Tuesdays. You know what's awesome? It's on all of the uh, podcast networks. And yeah, until next week, let's keep it scary. Later. Thank you.